Mr. Turner appears to live very modestly. Mr. Turner was roused from his bed by the sound of gunshots. There are pieces of shredded paper scattered over the table. This kitchen knife is quite sharp. This kitchen knife was used to cut the paper. So, that's the view Mr. Turner had when he opened the window. Brian Vercotti's contorted corpse. The dead body of Kenneth Butler. Mr. Turner had a perfect view of the crime scene. He saw the bodies clearly and Leighton Chapman standing over them. This fire is dying out. It was last tended to over an hour ago. The papers are almost entirely burned. I am unable to see what's written here. These words are illegible. The papers were thrown into the fire just a short while ago. The books on this shelf are in a mess. It looks as though Mr. Turner was trying to find something in a hurry here a short while ago. perfect match. So, Mr. Turner broke his stick when it became stuck between the cobblestones. He did not mention that he was so near to the victims. So Mr. Turner used a book to hide an object that he found on Kenneth Butler's body. The question is, what did he find? I can see prints from greasy fingers upon the cover of this book. Let us take a closer look. Well now, what a find! A precious jewel, concealed inside a book. A bracelet with a unique ram's head design. A distinctive feature of ancient Grecian artifacts, probably of the Hellenistic era.
Mr. Turner, how would it be possible for a man of advanced years, such as yourself, to rush from his bed to the window in a matter of seconds, as you have stated? Well, uh, I'm, I'm able to move very quickly, despite my age, and when the situation requires it, Mr. Holmes. I highly doubt that, Mr. Turner. I observe that you suffer a severe limp due to your injured right leg. It would have taken at least ten seconds for you to approach the window. That means you could have easily missed something or someone in Half Moon Street during that time. You're right, Mr. Holmes. I could have missed something. But it did seem to me that everything happened so quickly. Oh, time can pull tricks on you. And what of everything else that you told us? Mr. Turner, it is vital that we have your complete and true statement. Mr. Holmes, I do assure you that the other things I said were most sincere. Mr. Turner, you were not sincere with me. Not then, and not now. But, but, but Mr. Holmes... This, Mr. Turner does not look like anything that a poor man might possess. It is worth more than the home that you live in. I, I can explain. No, merely correct me if I am wrong. You saw Leighton Chapman through the window, but you also noticed a glittering object on the ground, this precious jewel. You walked down and took the bracelet from the body of Kenneth Butler, and when you heard the whistles, you hurried away. That broke your walking stick. It caught fast between the cobbles. Constable Marrow was unable to see you in the window as you were climbing up the stairs on your way back to your flat. Upon returning home, you hid the precious jewel inside a book. Mr. Holmes, please don't send me to prison. I didn't do anything bad. I'm just a poor man. When I chanced upon the bracelet, I saw it as an opportunity to make a little money. I was desperate. I only took the bracelet, that's all I swear. You made a mistake by lying to me. But you are not a criminal. I believe that. Although I must return this bracelet to its rightful owner. That is not the one I need. Here it is. I need to continue my research in my archives. Here it is. One of the victims, Kenneth Butler, was involved in the story of the stolen Hellenistic treasures. A visit to his pawn shop should tell me more. Butler's key matches the lock perfectly. A flare pistol. Perhaps it was pawned by a destitute sailor. It looks as though Mr. Butler kept a careful record of his operations.
The Ram's Heads. This necklace belongs to the five Rams of Mytilin collection. Interesting. That means that Kenneth Butler owned a part of this collection all this time, ten years after the theft. Crampons and a sharp ice axe would only be brought here by a mountaineer. Mr. Holmes, whatever brings you here so late at night? I'm interested in the case of young Leighton Chapman. He was arrested earlier this evening and accused of a double murder. I beg your pardon? That case is quite clear to the police. Or are there any new facts that we don't know about? Who knows, Inspector? Look, you are free to investigate, of course, Mr. Holmes. Chapman was arrested with a revolver in his possession, which you can find in the evidence room. The suspect himself is in custody. Did you find anything else on his person? A few personal belongings. Nothing particular, Mr. Holmes. Thank you, Lestrade. So this is the gun that Leighton was holding when he was caught by the police. It is a Webley revolver, a reliable weapon. It seems as though the shells were not removed from the cylinder. Two out of the six shells have been fired. There were two shots. These cigarettes are filled with cheap tobacco, nothing interesting. A cheap watch, bought with his own money, no doubt.